Hello everyone, welcome to the special CUBE conversation. We're here in our Palo Alto studios. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE, and we're here with Viv Holson, who's the co-founder and CEO of Rubrik, one of the hottest startups in Silicon Valley. Great to have you in, here in theCUBE. Thank you so much for this opportunity. So thanks for coming in. You guys have 292 million in funding, led the Series A with Lightspeed, Series B with Greylock, Series C with Kosla, Series D with IVP. You've got celebrities like Kevin Durant, uh, Frank Slootman, rock star investors, Great momentum. John Thompson just joined your board recently. He's on the board of Microsoft as well. It's all since 2014, like a short time. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, we have been very fortunate to have the market traction and demand for Rubrik's uh, original cloud data management product. When we started the company, we saw a market need around simplification, cloud enablement, and really automating, orchestrating backup recovery, recovery archive and DR across on-premises and the cloud. And you we guys build a, that you product. Guys, you guys had a pretty good run here. You got a new CFO, talk about that news. I want to get that out there. What's the new CFO you have? Our new CFO is Murray Demo. We hired him out of Atlassian where he, he joined the company and, and took the company public and then um, helped the company next two years become like a very fast growing, very successful public company. Mm -hmm. um, our goal is to build Rubrik into the next 30, 40 year iconic company and we are building a management team that, that will have the firepower and the, and the talent to take this company to really become the standard for data management. Yeah, I want to get into that. That's, I think the big story for you guys is, is that you, you know, not, not come out of nowhere, but it's you know, a classic startup story, great investors. But you know, we go to all the events, we see you guys out there, and just all of a sudden, just a massive run. So you put the foundation together. Um, you guys publicly said you're on a $300 million run rate. Great numbers, so great growth. Um, what, what's, take us inside Rubrik. I mean, how is this all working? I mean, you guys got good funding. You got a great management team. What's the core strategy? How, why is it working for you guys? The core of Rubrik is our culture, because technology evolved, product evolve, what is invariant is Rubrik's culture. Our culture of transparency, the culture of velocity, the culture of relentlessness is actually drives Rubrik. When we bring new employee into Rubrik, we tell them that it's not about what makes your boss happy or what makes the CEO of this company happy, what moves the agenda of this company. Always think about how do we make or give Rubrik the best opportunity the company can get and we drive on that basis. So there is no ego, there is no superiority that sales is better than mm -hmm. marketing or engineering is know it all and gods. It's all about how do we collectively build the foundation of a long lasting large public company. And so that early DNA, talk on. about that DNA. Where's that come from? Does it come from the product side, engineering side? What, where's that core DNA of that teamwork come from? The core DNA of the team is Google, Facebook, Oracle uh, software. Essentially folks who built the large scale distributed system, very strong industrial strength, enterprise product that powers most of the large enterprises in the world. So we took these two thoughts of Oracle-like industrial product and Google, Facebook, Amazon-like scale out distributed infrastructure and brought together in a single product. You know, it's interesting, Lightspeed does a lot of interesting deals that were once poo-pooed by many in the industry. Nutanix was one, and you mentioned Facebook, Google. These are not, I won't say cloud native, they basically built the cloud. They had to build their own hyperscale, they had to build their own infrastructure, all on open source. So you have that generational um, you know, DNA with the, from the tech standpoint and, and market standpoint. And Nutanix is a great example because they, you know, they brought all this together. This is a new, new kind of view, this is a modern perspective that you guys are taking. I want to ask you, as you look at the cloud, and a lot of people were poo-pooing Amazon early days, and look <laughs> at them, they've run the table, they're number one by miles in public cloud. No one's even close in my opinion, but you know, this is a whole new sea change. So you got Facebook, you got the Googles, you got the Nutanixes of the world out there who, who are doing things different, now are the standard. What are you guys doing that someone might say, hmm, I don't really get that yet, or might be poo-pooing it, that you think is a modern approach? And, and that's different. See, the, the issue really is that how do enterprises take advantage of public cloud simplicity, agility, scale, without being bothered by it? Because the, but because the cloud is a programmatic paradigm. Enterprise traditionally has been a declarative paradigm. How do you bring these two worlds together and really create a seamless platform where 
enterprises can automate, orchestrate, and secure their data. And that has been the vision of Rubrik. The vision of Rubrik is simplicity at a scale with cloud enabled a single software fabric across on-premises and public clouds. That has been the vision of the company and we have been delivering our product from the very beginning on this vision. We are just adding one blade after the next blade after the next blade to really go be a single software platform across multiple clouds and data centers. That's great. Again, it sounds like data is at the center of the value proposition um, from, your, your, from your discussion. Clearly, Facebook's data is center of their value proposition, although under a lot of criticism today, Google is a data company. As companies realize that data is critical for their business, how do they transform it from what it used to be? Because the old way was, you know, fenced off data warehouse or some sort of batch, you know, siloed software stack. And now that with all kinds of new things like GDPR, for instance, and that's coming around the corner, all these headaches are emerging where it's like, wow, this is really painful but they want to get to a seamless way. So what, what's going on there? Can you explain in, in simple way that that transition from the old data modeling where you had siloed stacks or you know, old you know, fenced out data warehouses to something that's really agile, somewhere data is a part of the intellectual property and part of the software fabric? This is a really uh, insightful question because you have a dichotomy here. The dichotomy is on one side, data is the biggest strength and biggest asset for all enterprises. On the other side, there is a, uh, there is a risk of uh, bad uses of that data and, and, and a company's uh, private or people's private information getting out. So how do enterprises or businesses create a, a platform where they can secure their data, they can provide access to the data to the relevant people or applications in a very controlled and secure way and at the same time uh, protect this strategic asset from theft, from ransomware, from just proliferating or losing. So, so the traditional industry focused on really building storage platforms for it. But our view is that the storage platform is, is just the keeper of the data. But the real issue is that how do you automate, orchestrate, and secure access to the data? Because the keeper of data can be on-premises, keeper of the data can be public clouds. But really this data control plane that actually manages and secures and provides access to this data is the critical piece. And that's the rubric's focus. All right, let's get into it. I want to get into the, the new product announcement. Before we get there, I want to get your thoughts on architecture because a lot of people have been enamored and been using successfully Amazon Web Services. Um, and some are saying that, oh, Amazon is the Roach Motel. Once you check in, you can't check out with respect to your data. Some are saying data portability is coming around the corner. But to move data around the cloud is not that easy. Um, so customers are building on Amazon, but they also might have Azure. So multi-cloud is out there, and you can also, Google's got some great stuff going on with TensorFlow and a variety of other things that they got rolling out, but it's not a one cloud fits all for all workloads, certainly in the enterprise. And then you got the on-premise uh, dynamic. How do, how do you view that? Because now that's an opportunity for you guys, but also a challenge for the customers where they start using the public cloud for business benefits and then realize, well, we got a lot of data in there. And then it becomes a data opportunity and problem. What's your view of that landscape? So the way we see the whole data management, it is, Rubrik is creating a whole new paradigm and platform. Because architecturally, we thought about this as something where you combine the data and metadata together so that your data becomes self-describing. And this is a very architectural thing that Rubrik did. Because when data understand where it came from and who he or she is, then you can take this data from on-premises to the cloud and power it on, or go from cloud to cloud and power it on some other place. So this core fundamental vision and architecture of data plus deep metadata connected together and mobile is what really powers Rubrik. And that is the fundamental um, platform and fundamental architecture of Rubrik. And that is our view in, in the future saying that once you create the self-describing data and dissociate data from the underlying infrastructure, then you give the real true power of the data back to the customer because data knows where it came from, which application it is associated with, who has access to it, and who can use it. And that's where you see the real power of multi-cloud, multi-data center, 
independence of data and application from the infrastructure. So you believe data should be frictionless with respect to where it should go at any given time? Absolutely, I mean that's where the power the enterprises and businesses can realize from their data because they can actually collaborate, they can give more uh, access to their data to their own users without worrying about the wrong data falling in the wrong hands. Can they actually transcreate transport of the data? Can they not stuck in one infrastructure versus take the data wherever they find data to be most applicable, easiest to use, and most secure? That's great, so I want to jump into uh, the new announcement. Before we get there, I want you to just take a minute to explain um, Rubrik's target customer that you guys are serving today. You got 900 employees, you got over $300 million run rate in business. Who's buying the product? How is it positioned? Who's the buyer? Um, what's the value proposition of, of the offering? So we sell into uh, enterprises. So we are not an SMB product. We sell into the enterprise. Our buyer are, are cloud architects. Our buyers are infrastructure architects. Our buyers are virtualization architects. Uh, folks who are thinking about automation, orchestration, uh, security of the data, recoverability of the data, protection from ransomware, things like that. And, and that's our core uh, technical and economic buyers and, uh, and, and the core businesses are people who have, um, who have employees more than So cloud four transformation or is classic Absolutely. Uh, projects this is you a, guys are involved in. That's the big driver for Rubrik. Rubrik's growth is indexed on the cloud. Yeah, and everyone is, has that on their agenda. All right, so let's get into the, the hard news. You guys are launching Rubrix uh, Polaris, the industry's first SaaS platform for data management applications. I'm smiling because whenever I see first, I want to know what that means. I've seen data application platforms out there. I've seen SaaS, so SaaS is not new. What makes you guys first? Talk about this dynamic about Polaris. What, it, what, what is it, why is it first? So the way we see our customers uh, use uh, multiple clouds and multiple data centers is they have some applications running in the on-premises, some applications are running in the cloud, they're building a lot of new applications in the cloud. So essentially cloud is, is fragmenting their data and applications. And we have Rubrik core product, our cloud data management product, wherever they run their applications. So Rubrik product runs on-premises, Rubrik product runs in the cloud to protect their application. And so, so is that the first dynamic, it's on-prem, it's on cloud? Yeah, that's, that's our first product. And then what we were working with our customers was that once we have this setup, how do you bring all of your applications and all of your data under a single system of record? And that is the Rubrik Polaris platform, which is complementary to our first hybrid cloud product, where through this single system of record, which is a global uh, catalog of all the application and data content, as well as workflows, as well as security, as well as orchestration, and we expose this through open APIs for Rubrik as well as other third party vendors to really build applications, no matter where application runs. So these so, applications, the data management applications that people or Rubrik will build on top of Polaris is for compliance, for governance, for auditing, for search across all the infrastructure. So you guys are offering also an ecosystem play with the Polaris, so you're enabling others to build on top of it. Absolutely, this is kind of like force.com platform for all your data management. So we saw Salesforce and MuleSoft had an announcement and that got a lot of, a lot of traction. What does that mean to you guys? Because that's, you see, Salesforce has been very successful SaaS platform as well as MuleSoft. What does that acquisition mean to the marketplace and how do you guys fit into that dynamic vis-a-vis -vis that trend? Salesforce did a great strategic acquisition of MuleSoft because they realized that if they combine applications on premises as well as in the cloud, then they create a single platform for all the structured data applications. But our view is that this is just half of the problem. Other half of the problem is on a structured data across many applications and all the metadata. Rubrik Polaris is our SaaS platform across on-premises and cloud, a single system of record with APIs where Rubrik will deliver data management applications for control, for governance, for compliance, for security across all applications that enterprises are managing, whether they, they are, these applications are on on-premises or in the cloud. And the unstructured data too is that metadata you're talking about, that's critical data. It's, it's metadata, it's application data, it's, it's all your unstructured data. 
So bottom line, this announcement, why would you put this in, in a single sound bite for customers? What does it mean for me if I'm a customer, for you guys, what's the value proposition of this new product? If you want to manage your uh, business with compliance, with governance, with security and access, Rubrik delivers a single platform for all your data management needs. Great, platform Polaris from Rubrik, enabling an ecosystem, first time bringing all that data together from the data center. People, thanks for coming on theCUBE, great to see you. Uh, congratulations on all your success. Thank you so and much for the opportunity. For, thanks for stopping by. I'm John Furrier here for CUBE Conversation, exclusive news here with Rubrik and theCUBE in, in Palo Alto. Thanks for watching.